All right, now let's talk about functions with exponents in them. Okay, first off, the most common one everyone's used to is the power function, where you raise x to a power. Okay, now an exponential function is actually in the form of a times b to the x, such as five to the x. So in other words, you switch places, like what we just did. Okay, so you switch places with the base and the x, and now the x is in the exponent. Okay. Now, there's a couple of unique kind of uh, exponential functions. There's the function that is exponential growth or decay, okay, right here. All right, and now let's define some of the terms. Okay, all right. Now, exponential growth and decay, uh, the n stands for the final amount. n sub 0 is the initial amount. r is the rate of growth or decay, and t is the time periods. Now, I do need to point out one thing, too. Let me get rid of this real fast. Oops. that for a sec. Okay, the actual formula should have a plus or minus in it because it depends on if it's a growth or if it's an actual uh, decay problem. So it depends upon how you're looking at the problem. It could be plus uh, if it's a growth and if it's a minus it's actually going to be subtraction from one. And you have to remember your rate of growth or decay have to be in decimal form. Okay, now exponential growth and decay, if you notice, is very similar except with one little hiccup, that n. All right, so here's the actual definitions right here. So a is the final amount, p is the principal amount or initial amount, like over here with the exponential growth and decay. r is the rate, t is the time, and then n is the number of times compounded in a time period. So if you've got a weekly uh, account that is growing is compounding interest weekly this would be 52 because usually your time is measured in years okay all right all right now the amazing beautiful stuff that you can actually mess with this is you can actually do a lot of your work and solve it on here so for example if you had an initial amount of a thousand dollars you put into a bank account and you had an interest rate growth of I don't know, 3%, so that'd be 0.3%, oh, that would be 30%, <laughs> okay, and you compounded that, what, quarterly, so let me see, that would be four times in a year, okay, in about how many years, or you would probably say, probably about five years, let it sit there, okay, and this is without adding anything, that's the really cool thing this is what you're the amount of money you would actually have you would just gain a hundred and sixty one dollars for no reason okay now obviously the higher the percentage we go so if we make this five percent we just gained another hundred dollars okay if we make the seven percent once again another hundred almost a hundred dollars okay if we make this ten this is things growing really fast so it just depends upon the percentage that you're working with now if we go smaller obviously it's going to grow a lot less faster but it's still going to grow at an exponential rate now here's the cool thing if we actually increase this to about monthly let's make this 12 okay if you notice I'm doing this I'm raising it to the power 60 times okay alright as you can see it doesn't grow as fast but it's still getting there so if I increase my rate it's going to increase quite a bit and as you can see, this is three dollars more than before when I was just doing it quarterly. Okay, so it just depends upon how you want to put everything in and how you want to work with everything. Okay, uh, the the awesome thing is that you can set it up like this and just have it be all concise and explained in Desmos. That is just really nice. Okay, all right. Now, if you wanted to graph some exponential functions, just make sure you have. Uh, the x in the exponent. Make sure that the exponent cursor is up here. Okay. Now the cool thing about all exponential functions, unless you have another number being multiplied out here, okay, the exponential functions will pretty much intercept the y-axis at uh, one. And why is that? Well, four to the zero is definitely going to be one. Okay. Now as you can see, the more I change this base, the steeper it gets. Okay, you probably can't see it as well. Let me zoom out a little bit. Let's make that a 10. There we go. Oops. 
somehow lost it. Let's make that an X again. There we go. As you can see, if you mess with it, it's going to get pretty wonky. Whereas if I were to do something like this, Y equals 2 to the X, it's not going to grow as fast. For example, at about, uh, let me see, about 3 years, or the U X is at 3 right here, this one's going to be at a thousand. So it's already increasing exponentially very, very, very fast. Okay. Now, can you do depreciation? Yes. So if you're depreciating, now usually that's not used with compound interest. So we'll get rid of these. Uh, let's say you buy a car for a thousand dollars and it depreciates at a rate of 35 percent per year. What will be worth after five years? boom hundred sixteen dollars it really loses some amount of uh, money but the main controlling factor of this is both the rate and the time left out there okay if I if I decrease this to one it's only at sixty six hundred and fifty bucks if I make it a two it's only four hundred twenty two dollars and fifty cents okay all right alright now if you needed to solve any of these problems for any other letter just go ahead and isolate it so for example if they give you a final amount and they give you the rate and time do everything you can and then divide both sides by this to get the initial amount or if they gave you let me see that n was one and they gave you the rate and the principal and the final amount but you didn't know how much time it was in the account what you would do is you just simplify it the best you can and then what you would do is normally you would think oh I raise it to the 1 over t power but you actually don't you're going to have to use something a little bit later and we'll talk about it we'll talk about logarithms you'll have to use logarithms to solve this type of problem so if your missing exponent in these type of problems is in the exponent I'm sorry your missing variables in the exponent you're going to have to use logarithms which we'll learn later okay but for right now this is all pretty much set up pretty nice and neat that you guys are going to have a really good time of just working with exponential functions and just remember when the x is in the exponent a lot of things can change okay alright thank you have a great day bye